we're going to do one more example of buoyancy. And this is going to be just a general buoyancy problem um, where we do free body diagrams. So our story is that we have a helium balloon. And it's carrying a load here, floating in air. And in this case, our fluid is actually air. We're displacing a volume of air. And the weight of that volume displaced gives us the buoy a buoyant force. They tell us that the mass of the balloon and the load together is 800 kilograms. And we want to know what's the volume of this balloon need to be so that it's motionless and at equilibrium. So the other things that we'll need to know is the density of air. And then we filled this with helium. So what is the density of helium? So let's sketch in what uh, forces we have acting on this. We have the gravitational force pulling downward of the load and the balloon. And we've got the weight of the helium itself. So the weight of the helium. So three things are pulling down. We've got the load, the skin of the balloon, that balloon, and then the weight of all that helium. And then, of course, pulling up is going to be the buoyant force, which is equal to the weight of the air that would have been there, that had been displaced by the balloon and the load. So let's set up our free body diagram. We've got the buoyant force is going to be equal to the weight of our helium, the weight of our load, and the weight of the balloon. And now we can fill in some things here. Of course, we know that the buoyant force is going to be equal to the density of air that would have been there, the volume of air that would have been there times gravity. And that equals to the weight of helium. And the weight of helium would be mass times gravity, or the density of helium, the volume of helium times gravity, plus the weight of the load would be the mass of the load times gravity and the mass of the balloon times gravity. And we can combine those because we know what the mass of the balloon and the mass of the load combined is, 800 kilograms. So this is going to be 800 kilograms times gravity, 9.8. We're looking for what the volume is. And notice that the volume of helium is the volume of air I've displaced. So the volume of helium is the volume of air that I've displaced. We're assuming in this case, of course, that the balloon is much bigger than the load. The load is also displaced a little bit of air. But we're looking and we're saying that this volume is probably, oh, what, maybe three or 400 times bigger than the volume of that little load that I'm carrying. So we can do that. So I'm just going to call that volume V. If I see a V helium or V air, I'll just call it V. So let's go ahead now and see if we can put some values in this. We're solving for V. And of course, everywhere here, I've got gravity. So I can cancel out gravity. We've got the volume of air times the, uh, excuse me, the density times the volume. So the density of air times our volume is going to be the density of helium times our volume, plus that combined mass, mass of the balloon and mass of the load, because we've canceled out gravity. And now you can see V is our only unknown. So let's slide that down a little bit. And it looks like V is going to be putting everything on the other side. Um, I've got the density of air minus the density of helium is going to be the mass of the balloon plus the mass of the load. And that gives me that that volume is going to be the mass of the balloon plus the mass of the load divided by that difference in density. And just to kind of look at the units for this, then we should end up with cubic meters. And this is going to be kilograms, just doing a unit analysis. Density, of course, is mass per unit volume. And that, in fact, does give us cubic meters. So we should be able to go ahead now and solve for what this volume is going to be. And it looks like our volume is going to be our total mass was 800. Density of the air was 1.29. Density of helium was 0.18. 
and it looks like that gives us a volume of about 721 cubic meters. So a very large volume of balloon is required so that we have enough buoyant force. That volume of air has been displaced. That gives us enough buoyant force to hold up this 800 kilogram weight, combined weight of the balloon and the load. So a good free body diagram problem. And again, once we get the free body diagram, we can go ahead and substitute what those forces look like in terms of density, volume, and gravity, and solve for any unknowns such as densities or volumes.